many events in this tale happened decades ago. But now the urge has come to share with others our view of heaven as we see it here, here in this one spot. We are not speaking of a locality, but a state of mind. It was over 70 years ago, my sister Gertrude was drawing some letters on a long wooden board, the name we had chosen for our house, Greater Light. Why, I can still hear our preacher reading that phrase from the Bible. And God made two lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. And today, as I sit here reading and reminiscing, I can see those late afternoon shadows drift across the lawn. The scent of peonies, the lilies, the memories of so many friends and family gathered around this patio, laughing and sharing stories. Gertrude with a book on her lap. Our greyhound, Angel Gabriel, curled up at her feet. This garden grew as we did. Why look by those stone steps. Our little juniper, brought from Austria, once the size of a boot. We planted it with such care. And now look at it, it's a towering tree. Its branches provide grateful shade as well as keeping out the passers-by in the street. In the old days, I could seldom step outside without those peepers hanging about and those cameras poking over the hedges. So disconcerting. <sighs> and yet, within our house and grounds, I feel such perfect peace and harmony. Isn't it odd? how two such opposite feelings can exist side by side. This house so captivated our imagination from the moment we saw it. Remember what you said, Gertrude, as you were packing your paints for our first trip to the island. You said, we just might find a barn someday. And now, look where we are. Remember that old weather-beaten man who said, any off-islander who buys that pig barn will be like a man sitting on a hornet's nest. <laughs> we didn't listen, did we? We found that grocer on Main Street, and we persisted. Belongs to the old town, he said. But we love that old barn, I blurted out. Well, my children, if you love it so, I just want to sell it to you. And he did. Wouldn't we have been astonished if we could have seen the turn of events then? The sunken garden, the wall with those great boulders, and the pool with that kingfisher fountain. What luck to have found that tile in the thrift shop. And only a dollar. <laughs> and of course, those magnificent gates. Look at them, 12 feet high, forged by hand, when I saw them, I forgot all else. I knew I had no place to put them, no place at all. And yet I knew I must have them. Their beauty must be ours. Those massive gates found in a junkyard before we even owned this barn. A perfect fit from the roof to the pig pen below. Twelve feet. Some might call this a mere folly, a supreme folly, our supreme folly. <laughs> My, how the town did talk and criticize us. All the taunts we endured, those who were for us and those who were against. No longer did we hear faint whispers drift across the fence. Storm clouds burst out all around us. Who ever heard of wrought iron gates or cutting a hole in the side of a barn? It's preposterous, they said. But some insisted, genius, a stroke of sheer genius. Why, it's sacrilegious. Sacrilegious, but oh, so attractive. So attractive. Surely we will win in the end, I said to Gertrude. They will see the beauty in what we are doing. Divine mind knows if we just step aside and let it work. Remember what Keats said, beauty is truth, truth, beauty. 
<laughs> he must have had us and our house in mind when he wrote that phrase. I truly believe that art captures the eternal in the everyday. And each day as this house grew, the power of those ideas were assembling themselves like pieces in a puzzle. And now, look at all the beauty we are surrounded by. So many precious objects collected over so many years from so many different places. Those rugs our brother Jay brought back from the Southwest. Two peacock chairs from Manila. The Russian samovar. Six golden pillars. And that Chinese porcelain. No one can say that's not native to the island. Why, it came here on a clipper ship. How I do cherish all that we have been blessed with. And yet, a question keeps rising up within me. Is it only what we see, chairs and rugs and tables, which pass in time? Or is there something enduring which lasts beyond the broken chair, that faded fabric, the worn out rug, something that lasts as a symbol of our love, as a part of eternal love, that eternal love which we name God. <laughs> Gertrude always said, Hannah, you take yourself much too seriously. She liked to tease me, but we both knew the power of that love for love and beauty and delight, there is no death. <laughs> Strange, isn't it? But it seems to me that time is but a limited view of eternity. The moment we call today and the moment we call yesterday seems so very close. I know now that whatever turmoil we created here really had nothing to do with us. The reaction to the house today is, well, amusing, really. Informative, of course, although I dare say it's unnerving at times. Nevertheless, I can't help but remember that nameless man who came to our door each summer. He was like some bird, some migratory bird. We never knew his name. He would just show up from time to time. Miss Monaghan, he would say, my visit to this island is not complete without stopping by at this house. It epitomizes to me the charm, the mystery, the old history, all here in one spot. Why, I quite agree. Don't you? <laughs> <laughs>